So let's address this question. Well, where are they now? Are they in heaven or in hell? Research shows that 99% of near-death experiences are positive. And there's that 1% that is negative. Negative meaning that there are near-death experience accounts of people who die by suicide and not by suicide, just who die, who experience bliss and enter darkness. But instead of seeing the bright light, they stay in the darkness. And usually they'll see many, many people around them, hundreds and thousands of souls right right next to them in this dark place. And all of them are talking to themselves. So here they are dead, and they're still obsessed with the same problems they had while they were alive. And it's a lonely place where you regret choosing suicide. Some of these souls spend what feels like an eternity in this space. Some of their spirits float back to earth and they'll follow around a bereaved family member, maybe their mother, who is still alive. And then they get to see and feel how their death hurt and damaged everyone that they knew. Survivors of suicide who've had these negative near-death experiences and been in the dark place have witnessed that whenever someone is ready, they call to God and a giant hand or light will appear to take them into the light. However, some of them judge themselves and they won't call to the light, even if they know that the light is there. Suicide survivors say they can understand why some people want to stay in the darkness. They're not ready yet. A few minutes ago, I said that your loved one did not experience pain when they died. Pain and suffering is not the same thing. Pain is a physical experience, and suffering is your thought about it. Your loved one who died by suicide, if they're in that 1% that is not the light on the other side, we perceive that as suffering but it is also thinking they need some time to think about what happened and whenever they're ready and they're done thinking they'll go into the light where they have friends support family and pets excuse me a moment <clears throat> so let's let's talk about a real life case study so Dr. Eliza, uh, Elisa Medhus had a 20-year-old son named Eric who died of a self-inflicted gunshot wound to the head on October 6, 2009. The day after his death by suicide, his father had a vivid dream where Eric came to him and he was joyous and excited and he said, I feel so wonderful. I'm so light and free. It's an amazing feeling. Here, Papa, feel. And when Eric reached out to grab his father's hands, his father was overcome with a sense of intense euphoria, unlike any sensation he'd ever felt before. It was pure joy and love and comfort and lightness. It was a freedom that simply cannot be described by our limited language as humans. And after a few moments, Eric let go of his father's hands and leaned towards him and said, this is what I felt like before when I was alive. And his father then felt this deep despair and darkness that had tormented his son. The world felt heavy and unwelcoming. And his father knew that Eric was trying to convey that he was fine in fact, happy for the first time in years. Here's your question. Where is my loved one who died by suicide now? Are they in heaven or hell? The answer is, if they choose to stay in the darkness so they can think about how their life ended, that is their choice. Whenever they call to the light, 
or ask God to help them, immediately they will be taken into the light. If you're worried that they will not or cannot call to the light and they're stuck down there, we're going to do a spiritual ceremony today to bring the light to them and shine it very bright. And you're going to call out their name and guide them into the light. 